This is the Mulligan Stew Podcast, music, film, food, and wine. I'm Terry David Mulligan. We would be honored if you would subscribe to The Stew, the Mulligan Stew Podcast, on Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. All the details for the podcast can be found at mulliganstew.ca. You'll also find Tasty Room Radio. You'll also find Mulligan Stew Radio. When I say one of Canada's favorite bands, Canada knows about Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. The rest of the world is coming to know about this amazing band. Here's the deal. They have been around for 25 years. They are celebrating their 25th anniversary in 2020. And they have new friends, a new label, (laughs) an upstart label called Warner Music. They headed for Nashville to Pinhead Studios, which is the home of Colin Linden. That's his studio. They recorded their new album called King of This Town. Tom Wilson is up for a Juno nomination for his latest Lee Harvey Osmond album called Mohawk. That's a story in itself. Tom is an artist, a poet, a writer, an actor, and anything else he wants to be. And on this day, he's a driver because he's picking up his grandkids. And the third member of Blackie and the Road of Kings is Stephen Fearing. And Stephen uh, is uh, touring as we speak in the UK, but they're all going to gather. They're going to tour Canada. Uh, January the 3rd or 4th of this year, they played the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, the home of the Grand Ole Opry. It was a big deal for them. So they've already started with uh, playing the Ryman, a Grammy with Colin and his Keb Mo project. Tom Wilson and Lee Harvey Osmond's album Mohawk has earned itself a Juno nomination. And they're going to tour the country. And as you'll find out in this conversation, there are other tracks from that session in Nashville that will be coming out on an EP this summer. Oh, by the way, there's a couple of things. When Colin and Tom talk about Thompson, they're talking about Thompson Wilson. That's Tom's son, co-writer, and could end up being the fourth member of the band. That's how much he works with them. And listen to Tom Wilson at the very end of the conversation, after he discovered that he, in fact, was a Mohawk, had that Mohawk blood and heritage in him. He has started a Tom Wilson Indigenous Scholarship in honor of Bunny Wilson, his mom, at McMaster University. They need $50,000 to start, and it will bring one Indigenous student to McMaster, all expenses paid as soon as they get up and running. Please enjoy this conversation with Colin Linden, Tom Wilson, Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. Uh, here's a couple of things. I have no idea where Stephen's going to be. I think Tom is going to be in Hamilton or Toronto or something like that. But I have found in Nashville, in his studio, at least at home, Colin Linden, who has just flown back from the Grammys um, with some hardware. How was your night at the Grammys, Colin? It was truly fantastic. I mean, uh, it had been quite a while since we had gone and and uh, Janice and I were both really excited to be there, and uh, it was for uh, producing uh, Keb Moe's new album, which is called Oklahoma, and uh, um, we had such a great time making the record that uh, when we got the nomination, it was really a surprise. You know, it had been a while for me, and but we kind of thought, you know, how many opportunities do you get to do this? So we went, knowing that we were up against uh, a bunch of other really good records, really good artists. So we didn't have real high hopes in terms of winning. And I think nobody was more surprised than Kev Mo when we won. <laughs> but that's his f- fifth time of winning that particular award. It is. Well, it's interesting, though. This is the first time that he had won it in the Americana yep. category, which is fantastic because he's, uh, you know, I think that he's always kind of felt like he, you know, is definitely a blues-based artist, but he does a lot of different kind of things. I think he was really pleased that the record was uh, adjudicated on its own merit. Yes. And your studio won its first award. That is true. That is true. It's really great. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. What, what's the actual uh, um, uh, company name of the studio? What's it called? Pinhead Recorders. <laughs> <laughs> We've called it Pinhead Recorders for a long time, um, really since 1994. But uh, it was a room in our apartment in 1994. It yeah. has continued to evolve, and now it's a now it's a real place where we can record. You know, a lot of bands. The new Blackie and the Rodeo Kings album was done entirely here, 
And uh, at one point, we had seven musicians on the floor. So it was really great. Well, the album's out now, Colin. Uh, first of all, congratulations yes. for congratulations on the uh, the Grammy win. Uh, it looks good on you, uh, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, the, I mean, I was very happy for you. Uh, and how oh, how was Terry. how was the night? What what did the room feel like? It it was there were so many th- elements going on. All the news about Kobe. It was really emotional. I think everyone was kind of. Uh, uh, every, there was sort of a raw emotion that was really evident, and it was, uh, uh, I think that it brought out a kind of a compassion. One of the things that was really uh, 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 kind of evident was that people were feeling the need to be comforting to one another. And I think that that is, uh, in, you know, that's indicative of the times that we live in, in this country and uh, throughout the world. But uh uh, but especially poignant in the context of Kobe's uh, tragedy, um, because I think that I mean it was at the Staples Center, you know, the, the house that Kobe built, and it really the news just was kind of coming down as the afternoon show began. Well, what a what a time! Yeah, let me get back to King of This Town. Did you just say to each other? All right, it's time. Let's start working on this. And and how long does it take to actually ramp up from the time that you decide, okay, let's get going? How long does it take to actually get those songs done, get it recorded, and and walk away? Well, the the window of time was really uh, uh, we Tom had had uh, got very excited about the idea of the fact that we uh, have twenty fifth anniversary coming up this year. And of our band, which is sort of hard to believe, considering it was done as a one-off record, not even with the intention of doing a gig. So it was really, uh, uh, you know, the fact that it's 25 years later is really remarkable. And uh, Tom felt that was a significant thing. And and uh, it, it has felt like, even in our absence, you know, when we haven't been out there touring or anything like that, that some people seem to remember us and like what we do. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, it's one of those people with Steve Kane and Warren brothers records. And the fact that he was enthused about the idea of, uh, signing Blackie and the rodeo Kings was a real shot in the arm for us. Cause, uh, you know, we kind of have moved along in our steady way for a long time. Um, one of the other things that I've got to say about uh, the birth of this record is it really kind of coincided with a real rebirth uh, in so many ways of Tom Wilson. Right. Uh, you know, he is his uh, what he's gone through and the, the evolution that he's gone through in the last few years has been nothing short of remarkable. And it's been a, a, a uh, an artistic groundswell uh, from him. Uh, I think he's becoming, starting to become the artist that he all, always has been. But I think that it, there's a, a flourishing of his own creativity that's been really fantastic. And um, he, uh, um, you know, uh, with his book and with his painting and with his Lee Harvey Osmond work, I really feel like he's come into his own, comfortable in his own skin in a way that, he, I think, probably more than he had ever been. And, I mean, Tom and I have been friends since we were kids. We've been friends for 44 years now. So wow. we go back a long way. And uh, so uh, um, that had an awful lot to do with uh, in interest in Wacky and the Rodeo Kings, and we are the beneficiaries of that. Mm-hmm. So with this in mind, uh, he and I got onto a, you know, he and I have stayed very close friends over the years, and I feel like we're just scratching the surface in terms of our writing. So he came down here when it became clear that we might be making a new record. We just wanted to get together and spend time together. So we started writing in the early summer and just we we have enough stuff that we could do another album right away. And uh, uh, it was really a great experience, the writing of it. So we uh, cut to cut to later in the fall we actually get signed by warner and it happens we get into the studio in february and uh everyone came down here 
and uh, we spent we spent like a week together. <laughs> and then Tommy Tommy came down several more times, and Johnny and Gary, uh, John Diamond and Gary Craig, also right. you know they would come down for various different projects I was producing and working on, and they worked very very hard at this record too. I gotta say, uh, which songs did you co-write with Tom? We wrote. Uh, Medicine Hat with Johnny. The people in Medicine Hat would like to know if the song is about them. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. Uh, it started lyrically. Tom said he had this kind of vision of riding across the prairie and and uh, and uh, the idea of Medicine Hat being kind of in the center of that yep. was, uh, and the idea of it being medicine doing that. He said, you know, he said he felt a blood memory from hundreds of years Oops. of doing that, and of wow. course, and and of course, uh, immediately I, I thought, you know, I thought of, uh, you know, I thought I thought of black cowboys actually, uh, you know, like uh, the whole uh, blues on the prairies that that is almost a culture that you don't think about very much, and and Tom was thinking of of you know uh, native ancestors. And Johnny was thinking of what a cool groove. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was everybody kind of pulling a different, uh, uh, pulling a different string out to get that one. That's one of my favorite songs on the record. And then we wrote together, the three of us, Stephen and, and Tom and I wrote uh, Cold 100 and uh, we wrote North Star. And also we wrote, well, we, there's another handful of songs that are going to be coming out on an EP in a few months that I'm very excited about too. And like, like, like bonus tracks them. kind of th- bonus tracks from the session. Yeah. We're, it's going to be a second, a second DP. We didn't want to have songs, not on the vinyl version that were, uh, that were on the CD okay. because really the record, I love how the record sounds on vinyl so much. We didn't want to sacrifice that, okay. you know, and have 11 songs on the vinyl. And uh, so Warner really liked the songs that weren't on the, you know the the other ones too, and they said, "Can we release it as as two separate records?" I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but I'm going to tell you that. Thank you. So, uh, um, I don't know if they mind or anything, but I'm excited about that too because that's a real big part of the sessions for this record as well. Colin London, Grammy winner, Blackie and the Rodeo Kings, one of three, uh, celebrating 25 years together. What do you remember about the first year? Anything, or is it a blur? Uh, the first year. Uh, one of the things that I that I remember so much was this wonderful feeling of freedom that you were up on stage with two other people that if that if if you if you fell sick with the plague you know those other guys those two other guys can carry it and if two of you felt fell sick with the plague yeah. that the other guy could carry it and there was something about that uh, especially you know during that particular time. You know, Tommy was on Sony as an artist. I was on Sony as an artist. Stephen was on True North as an artist. We all had these things going on. There was a freedom from the 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 pressures of oh, we have to do this, we have to do that, we have to sell records, we have to be doing this, and it felt like we did everything that we were going to do just because it was fun, and that was the only criteria. And I have to say, Bernie Finkelstein at True North. Uh, God bless him, because he really supported and encouraged that, and he was so enthusiastic about our band that that in a lot of ways, we didn't have to push that way. Huh. We could just really do the music, and it was really fun. Right. And keeping that spirit uh, has been, you know, that's been really what it's about, is trying to maintain that. Okay, Colin, I just wrote down something on my on my notepad. You know, remember when people used to write on notepads? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wrote common. I, still do. I I wrote common ground. The deal is, your common ground when you started because you came from different. I mean, you were the blues guy, and there was, uh, you know, there was some country leanings uh, with Tom and folk and and Stephen was doing whatever Stephen was doing at the time. Um, but you found common ground in the s- songs of Willie P. Bennett. But beyond that, you still had to find common ground with all of the albums that you put together. How, where was that common? Where was that nugget in the middle? Where was the sweet spot where you all, where you all met? Well, I think that Willie, of course, you know, still is is true north for us in terms of uh, yeah. that is that's the standard to aspire to, 
uh, and that's the that there's a commonality. But you know, the bottom line is, after 25 years, you become a band. Yeah. You know, when <laughs> when Tommy plays by himself, he sounds like Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. When I play by myself, I sound like Blackie and the Rodeo uh. Kings. That's part of it, you know. Uh, and and I think over over time, that is really one of the things that it becomes your common experience that you have of 25 years of being on stage slamming up against each other. I mean, Stephen Fearing and I have spent hours and hours and hours and hours playing guitar together. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people view him as, you know, a solo artist, and of course he is, and he's a wonderful one. But, you know, you spend that many hours on stage with somebody, you spend that much time, you become part of each other, and and that's the common ground. That being said, there were a few touchstones over the years that we keep going back to, and uh, uh, and uh, places for inspiration. Uh, certainly, with uh, Tommy and I have so much common ground. Coming up in the Ontario folk scene and the Canadian folk scene in the seventies, Stephen kind of came on board a little bit later, like in the later seventies instead of the earlier seventies. Um, so he that's a big a big uh, frame of reference, but also really a big frame of reference for us is rock pile dave edmonds and nicola wow. and the whole scene of music that surrounded that that's a huge part of what we do in terms of our energy and our our commonality and uh uh so having nick Lowe be on our kings and kings record was just thrilled beyond belief <laughs> having him work on that because and, and and uh you know we love his music so much and that whole sort of stiff records world you know elvis costello and that that period of time was a period of time where a lot of things connected for all of us at you know at the age that we are you know that that was a, a, a liberating time in music for us what was it what was what was that dude's record uh, or name uh, was it reckless eric was he on stiff yeah okay. yeah he sure was he's really good too huh. How about and ian that? gom yep. and uh, uh you know they they were they, uh, there was so much about that kind of music that was really, uh, it, it takes the music seriously, but not itself that seriously. And that is one of the things that Willie always said. Willie says, you take your music seriously, don't take yourself that seriously. There you go. And, uh, and that really, you know, that was one of the things that separated Willie from the pack and I think enabled him to become such a, brilliant artist such a fantastic artist celebrating 25 years uh, of uh, recording uh, Colin Linden Blackie and the Rodeo Kings uh, their album is out now for all of us for this year 2020 which is their 25th anniversary as I said King of This Town name of the album how was the night at the Ryman Theater in Nashville Jan 4 it was truly fantastic to play the Opry at the Ryman we played the Opry a few years ago which was unreal and fantastic unto itself but doing it at the Ryman, there's just that extra special, all those ghosts that are walking through there. And it was really wonderful. You feel, uh, you feel fantastic and you also feel uh, humbled because it really is uh, so many of the artists that you have loved over the years. And, you know, I mean, Bessie Smith played the Ryman. It's really, truly amazing. So it was great. And when... They found out that Blackie and the Rodeo Kings were going to be on the Opry that night. Two of my very close friends, uh, well, the three of my very close friends, uh, Charles Eston, who played uh, Deacon Claiborne on the Nashville TV show, and uh, Claire Bowen, who played Scarlett O'Connor, and her husband, Brandon and Robert Young, they all said, hey, can we be on the Opry so that uh, we can be on with Blackie and the Rodeo Kings? So I got to play with charles and i got to play with claire and brandon so for me for me getting a chance to play you know with as many of the people i love as i can on one night is that's hog heaven for me that's the happiest i can be i think so uh so okay it was fantastic now what are you going to do with your 2020 that you can tell us about we're going to start we're going to do a short tour in february of ontario we wanted to start uh, at the danforth music hall in toronto and uh, um, and that is uh, that's such a wonderful theater. Massey Hall, of course, where we played for the last two records, is closed for renovation, and hopefully, one day we'll get to play there again. And uh, but we're going to start uh, with a, a handful of shows, including the Danforth Music Hall and a few others, and at some really cool places in Ontario. 
um, to kind of get it warmed up. And then we have a number of sort of one-offs in the few months following. Uh, and then we're going to do a real Canadian cross-country tour in uh, in October and November. And uh, uh, it's very exciting. I kind of personally feel like I've never... Uh, you know, I, I, I make so much of my living and my life, I, my joy is working in the studio, working on records. I love doing it, and, uh, and I love being in Nashville. It's so stimulating. Um, that being said, I've never wanted to get out and tour more than I do with this record. Wow. I just feel, I'm so excited. I feel like, I feel like we've really, we've worked, we gave it really everything we had in the studio, and we got so much joy in return, <laughs> you know, that being able to kind of share that, if, if we can do that live, I think we can be a better band than we've ever been, and that is very exciting to me. So, uh, have you got time for festival season? We're going to do some this year. Uh, we're going to do a few of the smaller ones, and uh, some of them, not smaller festivals, but some of the smaller towns, I guess, uh, because we don't want to conflict with our concert series, uh, or, you know, our concert dates sure. in, the, in, in the fall, but who knows? We might end up doing some, and, and hopefully there. I know that we're doing some in. Uh, uh, we're doing the Shrewsbury Festival in England, a, a beautiful festival that uh, happens in the in the, the end of August, and hopefully there'll be a few other really cool festivals in different places in the world, actually. So, uh, so, and then, and then, you know, I, we all love doing the festivals, and if they'll have us. This is our first major label record deal as a band. I know. Our median age, our median age is 60. <laughs> you know, it means so much to have people have faith in you at that point. We just kind of kept on our path for all these years, never yeah. having, you know, we had, we had some hits, but never being like the biggest band in the world or anything like that. But we've all had real dreams and we've all, you know, been trying to, be honest and do the best that we can do the best we can for a long time. So, so I, I feel like, you know, um, king of this town is, you know, nobody would ever think that we would be king of any town. And, uh, so I think of the first verse as being for Tommy and the second verse being for Stephen and the third verse being for me. I, I, have, a, I have a question that I, I meant to ask, and that was, um, um, what effect do you think winning the Grammy with Kebmo uh, for yourself and the album will have on the studio and you? Well, hopefully it'll be a positive one, and I'll let you know. <laughs> I, th I just think it's good. It's all good. It's all good. I, oh, it's it can't. It's nothing but good, actually. You know, and and how it manifests, you can never tell. But it's nothing but positivity. So wherever it lands us, that's great. It's very exciting, and I can't wait. Thank you. Okay, talk to you soon, DDM. Love you. Yeah, you Bye. too. Bye, Bye bye. It's the 25th anniversary of Blackie and the Rodeo Kings, and there at the beginning was Tom Wilson. There in the 25th year is Tom Wilson, and I found you uh, where Tom. Uh, uh, well, are you, you're, well, first of all, I'm so happy I didn't get kicked out of the band. I mean, God, I thought, I thought it would have been thrown out in the first year, but I actually made it, Terry. I am. Uh, I just parked in front of my grandson's school in Hamilton, Ontario. I'm picking both of them up for my uh, my weekly after-school riot. Okay. Well, uh, uh, most outstanding memory of the first year of Blackie and the Rodeo Kings? Uh, I think just the surprise that... Um, we sang so well together. I, I was never used to uh, singing in a band that used harmonies. You know, um, I, I usually was just a lead singer and uh, never really worried about, you know, anybody else's singing. And suddenly, uh, it just the way our voices felt together, uh, it felt like a brotherhood immediately. That, Terry, and the fact that we were singing songs, um, we, we, were, we entered the, uh, the ring... Uh, without any, uh, with barely any ego, because we were singing the songs of Willie P. Bennett, the yeah. guy that we uh, loved and who inspired us and who opened up the doors of possibilities at different times and different places for each and every one of us. But you did have to find common ground after you did the, you know, uh, uh, Willie's songs, and then you moved on into your career, the second and third and fourth album. You had to find common ground. Where was that common ground, Tom? I revert back to the singing. Because uh, it, it makes a big difference when, 
when you open your mouth and, and sing some notes and somebody gets on top of that and sings with you. That was a, that's a big deal. I, it's still to this day. We surprised ourselves when we sat in Nashville a year ago and started recording this record. We surprised ourselves. It's like, oh, yeah, this, this actually this is different than anything else we've ever done. Um, that's, that's, the ongoing, that's the ongoing surprise. Well, this uh, king of this town... Which is a, a could be a could be a, a, a fist in the air. It could be a put down. It could be a giving somebody a shot over their bow. Um, uh, the, the album you can tell you had fun in that studio. It just shows in and around the edges. Um, how many songs did you write, and which one did you do with Thompson? Um, uh, the one I wrote with Thompson was uh, uh, "Baby, I'm Your Devil." Okay, we wrote that. We wrote that with uh, the two of us got together with Hoxley Workman and wrote that song, and it was kind of sitting. And it was like, man, this would be this would be a bit of a change in direction, the right change in direction for Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. And, and I kind of think they, uh, that band knocked it out of the park in, uh, over uh, the the song was in in left field and they knocked it over the right field uh, wall you know i want to give people a sense of uh, of this album um let's see if we can have a meet you and i have a common ground tell me about hard road very different very different yeah well uh, it, it uh, i got together with um johnny diamond uh on bass and gary craig over at gary's house on the beaches in the beaches in toronto and we were just playing a bunch of songs we were kind of getting ready to I was working real hard, you know, uh, all of uh, November and December, two year, a year and a half ago, uh, getting ready for Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. And I got together with them, and Johnny left. He had to go, uh, I think he's going to a hockey game or something. And I was walking out the door, I had my coat on, and Gary said, you know, uh, we've never done a song in six, eight time." <laughs> and uh, being, being, you know, the, the incredible musician I am, I said, I don't even know what six eight time is, Gary. <laughs> so why don't you show me what six eight time is? And he started playing that beat that opens the album, and I started singing. And uh, uh, I'm not kidding. I'll sing. Uh, I sang the song as, as it sits now. Colin Linden brought in some lyrics and and of course brought in some great great guitar parts in that. And the McCrary sisters. The McCrary sisters. Yeah. yeah. And they uh, they came and sang on that record too, which was a real treat because I've never recorded face to face with the McCrary sisters, and I mean these are the voices of of Slow Train coming. Exactly. You've got to serve somebody. Yep. You know what I mean? All that Dylan stuff, and and uh, so I was big fans of them. I saw I saw uh, the McCrary on. Uh, on that tour, on the uh, Slow Train Coming tour with Bob Dylan at Massey Hall, two nights in a row. And she <laughs> blew my mind then, and she blew my mind singing my own song. Yeah. All right, the track that I wanted you to, I was trying to lead you into, and the track that Medicine Hat wants to know what the hell they're doing on the title is Medicine Hat. Uh, and the riff that, that uh, Colin puts in behind you, and the tonal structure of the song sounds like you're about to do a cover of Gloria. By, For sure, right? It sounds it's just got the same sort of uh, intro to it, and then we're often running. The song is "Medicine Hat," but you're talking about uh, uh, love and driving down the road, right? There's a greater story around it in my mind, of course, but I was able to pull some poetry out of that long, drawn-out story of these two people who um, were, <laughs> were had all this vast flatness around them uh, and had found each other somehow. And I managed to turn that into, uh, you know, something that you might hear uh, a garage band do. And that's really what Colin and I were trying to do with that song, was that we were really big fans. When we were driving around Nashville, we'd uh, put on Little Steven's uh, uh, Underground Garage. Yeah. And it's like every song that came on there was like, we felt like we were 16, and that that's exactly what we wanted to do. I mean, you listen to... Uh, that early garage rock and roll. And I mean, it's why I ended up, you know, touring with Teenage Head when I was a kid. You know what I mean? It's like, was was really the foundation of punk rock. And so we thought we'd bring that element into Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. I really love the song. I just listened to it on the way home from Toronto today. 
You mean a little, uh, there's a little rock piled in there. It's a little Dave Edmonds, uh, Nick Lowe stuff. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Loving because, that. Because uh, long live rock pile. You, me, <laughs> Colin Linden, and Craig Northey from the odds. <laughs> we are we are the, the rock pile fans. The stiff gang. All right. It's the 25th anniversary of Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. I'm so excited. I have Tom Wilson on the line. Uh, you told me, Tom, that uh, you came from the Juno presentations, right? Or you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Was there any sign of Blackie and the Rodeo Kings or Tom Wilson or Stephen Fearing or Colin Linden in those nominations? Uh, there, uh, Lee Harvey Osman has got the nomination for uh, Best Contemporary <laughs> Folk Record, I think, or uh, I forget what <laughs> I forget what the category is. But they kind of they send you a, an email inviting you to this uh, breakfast thing, right. and uh, and if you get invited, then you're nominated right so i knew that i was going to be nominated i was actually hoping to be nominated in the indigenous category yeah but uh i guess i guess i'm i'm i gotta do some work in that uh, department and i actually can i mention something terry i am doing work um i'm i've started this year uh we're launching the uh, tom wilson indigenous scholarship uh, in in honor of Bunny Wilson at McMaster University, so Fantastic. We, uh, I'm gathering money from all my money friends, and I'm putting on a show with the orchestra at McMaster University, and we're raising money. We're going to raise fifty thousand dollars to start the scholarship up to bring an Indigenous student from somewhere in Canada to McMaster University and pay for it all. Fantastic, Tom. Fantastic. Well, Thanks. Uh, well, I'm really. I'm really quite excited about this and way. how yeah. and how can people help uh, on this end of the country well we're going to get a website up right now um right now it's it's kind of uh, me walking around <laughs> me me going into uh meetings in in giant office towers in toronto and saying hey yeah how about some money do you clean yourself up i do not okay <laughs> Uh, I, I, it begs a question. This is a one-off question, but it, it kind of dawned on me uh, as I was waiting to talk to you. And that is when you came to grips with and when you came, uh, you accepted the uh, history of your family and where you came from and, and that you were had Aboriginal roots front, center and back. You had to turn around and tell Thompson. How did that go? Uh, well, completely welcoming, and and just like me, when I found out that I was adopted, and when I found out that both my mother and father were Mohawks, uh, it it answered. It, it was almost like a light shining on me that uh, I'd been waiting to shine on me all my life, and I'd have to say both for my son Thompson and my daughter Madeline, uh, they were waiting for that light to shine on them, and uh, that's. That's the best way I can put it. That's exactly what happened. It was finally, finally, I've been found. And uh, I think that the three of us have been discovered uh, together, which is, is pretty amazing for a father, a daughter, and a son. This is completely, again, a uh, left turn here. Uh, Warner Music, you're with Warner Canada. But what the, I, yeah. mean, I mean, it's astonishing. You know, you, you said that a couple of years ago. I can't believe it, but we got signed to a major label. What difference is this going to make? What do you think in this 25th year? What difference are you seeing? Well, uh, really, we, we, uh, I was looking for a like-minded uh, music lover. And Terry, uh, I was looking for, uh, you know, not blowing smoke. I was looking for somebody like you. Somebody that was a, a, a fan of music, that was interested in how it was made still, interested still in getting people to hear it. And, and I knew that person was Steve Kane, uh, the president of Warner. So uh, I waited a year. Uh, I, you know, it was like we'd run into each other. We ran into each other at the Governor General Awards. We'd run into each other at the Juno Awards, at SOCAN events. And I'd say, hey, listen, I, I, got, I want to talk to you about something. He goes, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I know. We're going to do that. And Steve is a guy that well, I used to sneak into Florida Razor shows, my band in the 80s, and Teenage Head shows in Oshawa. So he was like, he's a little younger than me, and he had to sneak into these uh, punk rock shows that we used to do. So we had a common ground, and I knew that he was a music lover, and I knew that he dug in and put out, uh, you know, reissued the Teenage Head, first Teenage Head album on Warner. So I knew that Blackie and the Rodeo Kings would resonate with him because, you know... We, uh, we're not about uh, having the right haircuts or the proper trousers, you know. We're 
was really about sitting and playing music. And Steve Kane is a fan of music. So we, it was kind of, it, it, I, I believe that it's, it's a great marriage for our 25th year. Did I ask you, or did you tell me what it felt like being on the stage at the Ryman Jan 4? It was uh, very emotional. I joke, Terry, that uh, I'm getting so old and I lose so much testosterone every day <laughs> that I cry regularly. But it was uh, going for sound check there. It was, it was very emotional standing in that spot with Bessie Smith and Houdini and Hank Williams. Uh, all those people stood there. And, of course, you know, the Roy Acoffs and, and, and uh, all, the, all the stars of the Grand Old Opry all stood on that stage. And it's still the Confederacy. And it's still got this... You know, it's it's a little weird for a guy from the North in some ways. But at the same time, it was completely welcoming. And, and uh, you know, we, 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 our dressing room was the was the Johnny and June dressing oh, room. Oh, right? man. <laughs> and, and up in the dressing room uh, was this big picture of Johnny and Elvis, you know, with their arms around each other, looking like kids and looking excited, right? And when you stand back from the photo, you realize, holy Holy shit! That was taken right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is this is the same room where Johnny and Elvis like were hanging out. You know, so having a Coca Cola. You know, and all the possibilities, all the history, all so, the possibilities in the one photo. All that history, you know, Terry is crazy. And I've been to the Ryman before for the Americana Awards, and I'm standing in the uh, in the in the gateway to the stage. I didn't. I wasn't on the stage, and I'm standing there with Colin Linden who is a great ambassador uh, and, and really well-loved in Nashville, um, which is why he went there 22 years ago, you know, yep. was to find a home. And, and Emmy Lou Harris came up and started talking to us. And, and then uh, <laughs> Greg Allman came by, and he started talking to us. And then Robert Plant was standing talking to us. And then Lucinda Williams, and I looked around. I didn't say a thing for once in my life, Terry. I kept my big mouth shut. And, you know, I was standing there looking at Emmy Lou and Robert Plant and Greg Allman. I thought, oh, my God, my great seven record collection has just come to life right in front of my eyes. <laughs> the set list uh, for your 25th anniversary tour, will it, will it go all the way back to Willie P? Yeah. Yep, for sure. Come on, train. Music in your eyes. Um, lay some pretty flowers. Uh, and, of course, White Line, which we have been finishing our shows with White Line for 25 years. Yep. I can't see us ending a show any other way. So Pete Bennett lives deep in our hearts and on stage with us every night. So that we can plan our summers and fall, when will you start yes. the tour across Canada, and when will you finish? We do uh, we do five shows in Ontario in February, and then we do uh, festivals throughout the summer. Then we go to England and Denmark and come back, and we tour. Canada. The week after Thanksgiving, October, we start uh, on the far west coast uh, on the island, and we work our way right across the country. We'll be coming to Vancouver, and we'll be doing shows in the interior. I don't want to say them because I don't want to get them wrong. I don't have them in front of me. Calgary, Edmonton, Saskatoon, uh, all everyone that listens to your show will be uh, will be coming there. Okay. Thank you, Tom. And bless you. And, uh, Thanks, Terry. C- congratulations on that Juno nomination. Thanks, buddy. Tom I gotta go. Oh, and what about Colin winning a Grammy? What before? about Colin winning the freaking Grammy, man? Yeah, I know. I've never been prouder. Once again, once again, losing testosterone, crying over everything. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you the, can count on me. If you need a crier, I'm your man, Terry. The Prince of Pinhead. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll talk to you. I okay, can bye. Go and get my grandsons. Okay, you go. Bye. bye. Tom Wilson of Lee Harvey Osmond. We wish him luck at the Junos. And Colin Linden, the co-producer of Keb Moe's Oklahoma album that won the Grammy a couple of days ago. In conversation on the Mulligan Sioux podcast. Hope you enjoyed that. We have invites out and we have some confirmations on upcoming interviews with Andy Schaff, Colin James, William Prince, and Nathaniel Ratliff. There's more. I have to hold my tongue. This is the Mulligan Stew Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe. Makes all the difference in the world. Details at mulliganstew.ca. Thank you for listening.